everybody happy hump day wednesday so we are coming in today with our final reveal of the vogue pattern in focus so remember every quarter for those who are new to the channel welcome but what this is is a series that i've started on my channel where every quarter i will focus in on a particular pattern company i will sew other patterns and different things of that nature but the um, point is is to really start working through my pattern stash but also to learn more about maybe the design fit maybe something particular about that particular uh, pattern company and so we are wrapping up Vogue this was the last selection this was the um, and the subscribers pick what pattern I choose as a matter of fact make sure you head on over to the community tab after you see this video because I have put up the next pattern and focus which is simplicity patterns I have put up three patterns so go over to the community tab check that out take your vote and then you'll see a future video on what was picked and the fabric selected so anyway this one turned more into a quasi sew along um I didn't intend it to be that way it's usually as you all know it's sew with me's um the difference between the sew with me and the sew along sew with me is just you know i'm recording me cutting out doing different things i'm not walking through any particular steps or anything like that maybe i'll show a, a technique or something here or there but mainly not and so um but this time i was showing so much and as i was going through it it actually became more of a sew along <laughs> and so um still not showing every single step inside and out but there might have been a couple tricky bits that um, might uh, confuse some people so what I have done is left time stamps along the bottom of the screen and you can just skip along to what you would uh, want to see um, and then I'll wrap up the video with a full review and what I think about the pattern obviously I have the dress on so you will definitely see pictures twirls me in the dress and my final thoughts I will start out by saying again this wasn't intended to be a so long so i wanted to pop in with the intro just to let you know i did not cut out the hem facing pieces i've done that on different patterns before and it just never it always for me always seemed to um at the hem of a dress seemed to make it more uh wavy or wobbly and it obviously could be me and how i'm putting it in so i did not use that um that pattern piece so if you want to sew up this dress it's newly released again vogue 1937 um view a definitely stay tuned hop on in and then come back for the final review
one thing I want to point out about uh, the front, make sure that you mark this piece clearly. Um, as you can see here, you have a pleat, but then this one part is for the right side only, and then this part is for the left side only. <clears throat> so you have the different lines. So what I did was make sure I marked all of that, and I will have the pattern piece next to me to you know make sure I fold that little tuck piece <clears throat> on the front of the pattern. Same thing for the pocket. I just finished tracing off the pocket. So the pocket, because there aren't four pieces of pockets, it's just two, and it's a uh, nice way that they put it in, but you have the fold line you wanna make sure you mark for your size, and then the size line for your pocket. You wanna make sure that you mark the appropriate one. So I just did that as well. So you can see, if you can tell there, there is the line and then there is that marking. So just wanted to point that out and make sure you remember to do that um, when you're tracing, when you're tracing or um, if you happen to trace the front pattern piece, but when you cut it out and you need to mark all of your notches and all of your markings on the front. All right, everybody, um, as you all know how I like to do it, it's a whole nother day, obviously, but um, I tend to get get through a lot of my sewing after I had a good workout, so I've had a good workout. And if it's hot where you are, steaming, like us, with this um, over 100 de degree plus um, heat index and the temperatures are rising, make sure you are drinking your water. So we are going to go ahead and get started um, sewing. Um, I did read through the instructions a couple times. It seems to be, I love that the yoke has two pieces. So that's going to be a nice uh, clean seam. But um, as usual, the Sandra Bedzina patterns take you through fitting. If you want to go through fitting. Um, and so for me, I am not going to do that. I'm actually going to go ahead and jump right in um, and make sure all of my, in, my pieces are in the face. And um, it has a starting with the front and back yoke. So I'm starting at number two, if you are following along. And then uh, we're going to get going. Let's go. Okay, so you saw me just make sure that my pocket pieces were nice and flat after the edges were surged. So you do do a clean finish on your edge. And what you're doing is if you have some steam -a seam um, like this, what you're doing is putting it on the edge that you just surged or did your clean finish on. And so that is what I am going to do here. And you leave the tape on. It wants they uh, the instructions say to leave the tape on. 
So we're gonna leave the tape on, but make sure that we put, and I'll show you what this looks like once I finish adding it on here, but you just wanna make sure you're going around the perimeter where you have, however you decided to clean, finish your edge. Okay, so this is how it looks after the steam and seam have been added around the edge. You saw me just kind of touch all around just to get it to secured onto the pattern piece. Now it's time to work on finishing the pockets. Okay, so this is the front piece laid face down. And I just wanted to show you if you're following along. Again, not necessarily a so long, but I do want to point out just a couple things to you. You will notice the pocket piece that has this extra flap here. What you would have done, so we're going over three, four, five, and six, those steps for the pocket in the pattern. You had to stabilize this area around the pocket. And hopefully you can see that I'll zoom in as much as I can so you can see where you needed to stabilize right around in the corner so the pattern um, tells you to go ahead and stitch so make sure that your your markings are clear on your fabric you might not be able to see mine but I stitched here to the dot and then out right you want to stabilize that area because what you're going to do is clip into but not through those dots that you stitch to almost like the reinforcement area and you want to do that to both sides and then what you're going to do is you're going to fold in the corners right fold in the corner so it's along that stitch line you're going to fold in the corners like so and then you can press this down Actually, if you struggle with these pieces staying down, you can also use some uh, steam machine again here just to lay these edges down. But what you're going to do is make sure these two edges are stitched down and all you're going to do is fold in to the fold line. And so, and this is how it will look once it's sewn in. So you will see those points right there and then because remember you marked your pocket along this way and then once this is stitched so you're going to stitch across down this side all the way across and then up this side and then what you are going to do is take your pocket remember you had your steam seam on here and make sure you grab the right pocket piece <laughs> But remember you had your steam seam. You're going to lay this right sides down. Right side to the wrong side. And you'll see. Then what you're going to do is take the um, steam seam tape off. And then you're going to adhere it to the fabric. And then once you've done that, you're going to flip this over or what I will do is just stitch. You're just going to stitch all the way around after you've adhered it. So once it's com completed, I'm going to try to flip this over so you can see. This is what you will have. And you see all these edges meet up. So when you do sew your side seams together, it will catch all of this. It will catch all of this. Because remember, you're doing 5 eighths seam allowance. So this here is that 5 eighths, and it's just going to catch all of that. And it's, that's going to be a nice pocket that you have inserted. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and finish mine off and I will be back once the pockets are adhered. So this is how it looks once it's pressed down. So it becomes 
you peel off that steamer seam and you just press it down and what I did was mark there is a notch here but the dots there were two dots here and I just don't want you to be confused I re just kind of remarked them so you can see them at least for recording purposes so the dot here will match where the dot is where you laid your pocket on both sides so that what we just created see that see that so that is right here and that's where they will go and if you made your seam you kind of traced the outline of where your pocket is going all of that fit into place and now it's time to move on to the next step Okay, so now I am at step eight, which is the collar, and you stitch them together, right, all around this inner part. And it talks about pounding like the edges out, but you all know how I do the clean finish on the edge of my necklines when it has the um, interfacing. So I didn't do all of that, um, but um once you stitch all around they want you to clip um clip this what you just stitched down to a quarter of an inch and then clip the corners because you're going to turn it right side out and so that is what i am going to do just clip the seam and then that corner there is where you're gonna clip and then take everything down a quarter of an inch again clip that corner And then what you're going to do is turn it right side out and you can get your pointer. I have mine. Grab my pointer. And so I'm just going to make sure my edge is turned out. And see that? And you do the other end. Make sure. Just, and be gentle. <laughs> And so then you're supposed to stitch around this edge up here, not the open end just yet. They just want you to hand baste. It says hand baste around this edge. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use my machine. And then it says baste the raw edges closed. So then you baste these raw edges closed. So essentially you're doing the seam on, on both sides. So I am going to do that and move on to the next step. Okay, so I have put the collar on. So you may wonder, and this is from the right side. So you attach the collar to the right side of the neckline. Now you might be wondering, because it's not necessarily stated in the instructions, which end, because you're basting one end and then you're hand stitching the one end of the collar remember in the previous step so the end that you attach to the neckline is the one that is basted <laughs> just so you know you're not putting it wrong side on um but once it's stitched in so now you have your collar is all done so that looks nice now it's time to move on to the yoke lining um, you skip steps 12, 13, 14, but we're going to go ahead because that's for the top. 
that's for the tunic and so we're going to do the yoke lining and front facing pieces so go ahead and grab you can set this piece to the side for now grab your second yoke piece <clears throat> So here's your second yoke piece. Make sure you grab your second yoke piece as well as your um, front facing pieces. Those are the pieces that you are going to need. And then we are going to, because the second um, yoke piece is gonna be for a clean finish, the lining part. So we are now going to attach, actually I need to clean up my edges. I had extra interfacing on here but um yeah this is moving along quite nicely so i'm gonna clip this real quick like so i'm just gonna put a clip here just so you know where we're going and remember you have the curve again this is right sides together see that curve you have the curve in the yoke right there So this is what it's going to look like. So it's right sides together. That's the wrong side. See that right sides together, clip those together. And then you will clip into, it says, then you clip into the curve of all of that. So once it's all stitched together, you'll have a neckline all the way around that you'll then need to clip into the curve. I am going to do that and take a quick break and I'll be right back. Okay, same day, but it's a little later, um, all freshened up. So, I went back because I'm thinking, I was thinking why were we finishing the edge? Remember I just said we were finishing the edge of this and edge of that, I was thinking that didn't make sense. And so I read it too fast, that didn't make sense. <laughs> you're finishing the edge of the front facing piece. So go ahead and finish however you're gonna finish the edge here and down at the bottom on um, both pieces, then attach and clip into the curve. <laughs> okay, now here's where you're gonna um, grab your that front facing piece. So let me detach this real quick. So real quick, we just attached that front facing to the other lining piece. So you had a, another lining piece, remember? And then we clipped into that curve. And that's just to loosen it up so when we attach it, things uh, lay properly. Now you might want to just re-mark um, your some of the marking areas um, on those pieces. But what you're going to do, grab your front pattern piece. And so this might seem a little tricky, but it's not. So remember, we already added the neck, that uh, neck band piece, right? So that's how that looks, that's on there. So you are going to, so you see this is the front and this is that front part right here, right? And so, and let me show you like this, just in case, you know, if we have a beginner following along, remember we had, this is why it's so important to mark your notches. So remember that front part, you had the notch marked here. So, and you also had, and you can probably barely see, see my little uh, marking for the dot on this side? That's right here. What you're gonna do is take that front piece, that facing piece, and remember you have a dot here. Make sure that you can see that. <clears throat> okay you have that marking here that piece and then you have that long part here so and then you have your notches so watch how this uh lines up so your collar piece is facing down right because you had uh, basted it in place remember that dot over here you have the dot over here they should match up so pretty much let me stick a pin through here so you can kind of see where this is going. So you have the dot, and when I stick my pin through, oops, just a little a hair off. Yeah, now we have my, my pin through, right? 
and you will notice that these edges match up and on that um, front facing piece there's two notches and then on the actual front piece there's two notches so that's that's what's gonna line up when you get to that step but that's how you know you're in the right spot and so what I'm going to do is go ahead and clip because what you'll notice that shifted a little bit there I'm trying to look through the viewfinder <laughs> or through the screen, you will notice as you are clipping all the way around, here's the shoulder seam. This is the shoulder seam of that facing piece. You will notice those will, and they should, I should, shouldn't say will, but they, as long as you've done everything properly, you see that shoulder seam right there, shoulder seam right there, those match up those should match up all the way around so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and clip mine in place and then show you what that looks like once it's clipped in place again i know this step is a little tricky and this is step number 17 in the instructions so as you can see i have clipped everything around so that's why it's important to stay stitch your necklines as the instructions um talk about and you want to make sure you're clipping into some of my clips folded down but you just want to make sure you're clipping into those curves because see how that makes that lay better oops get back out here see how that lets that lay better all the way around I could put another clip there I won't it's good and so everything match up my shoulder seams the um, the, the marking in the front the shoulder seams match up and the other marking in the front okay so what you have done is let me put this out here what you've done is attach that front facing you stitched all the way around do know all, this is super thick this is a lot of fabric in here but you stitched all the way around and you're only stitching to the dot so if you're looking at that step 17 it's a lot it's a big paragraph but essentially you're attaching stitching from dot one end to the next dot that is a very very thick seam super thick seam and so if you want to peek once that's turned there's your collar isn't that cute but um back here what they want you to do because this is so thick this is super thick they want you to trim this thick seam down to a quarter of an inch and then under stitch it and when you under stitch it you are stitching um the seam towards <clears throat> and because you clipped in it might feel like you might have a couple pieces a little straggly sticking up and that's fine that's no big deal but what they want you to do is and I'm gonna get this situated for you you are going to first clip so everything you just stitched go ahead and clip it down to a quarter of an inch and then you're gonna go back in and um an under stitch and I'll sh show that to you just in case for those who might not be familiar with under stitching and how that will look okay so I just cut down to a quarter of an inch as they suggest so here is your facing piece and here's that lining piece so they want you to under stitch which is that seam is still bulky but it kind of naturally falls towards these facing pieces and so what you want to do is make sure set it under your machine turn it down and just stitch all the way around you're gonna under stitch and so you're attaching what's left of the seam to the lining piece to the lining side to these sides of the pattern pieces and you're gonna do that all the way around and then it wants you to clip into the circle okay so with the under stitching so again the seam and this again it's quite bulky 
So don't be intimidated by that. But what you're doing is turning it towards that facing piece and towards the lining. And you're going to stitch real close to your stitching line. So where you attached all of this, these pieces together, you're going to sew real close to that. For me, that's about, let me grab something here. That's about right here for me. I'll be stitching all the way around that area. And just take your time. There is no rush. Okay, so we have understitched and our everything is sewn down. So the facing is sewn down to the front all the way down. We've understitched. We only had to understitch. It didn't say to understitch, I don't think, to the front pieces. Okay, so here we go. We've everything is attached in the front, right? And so remember it said about clipping into the, um, to that dot. So you can't see my dot, but I'm just going to clip into it, which is all of those layers. So you just want to clip into that dot, which gives a little bit of a give. So I imagine once we turn this out and I'm going to clip, I didn't clip all the way, a quarter inch all the way around. Um, I imagine when we turn this around, that's going to allow it to lay nicely. So here's the other end that stitched all the way down to the front. Remember I was showing, sharing that with you. And again, you clip into that clip into the dot. And then we are at step 18 where you turn everything out. See that? Once you turn everything out and that contrasting face pe facing pieces right there, see how that looks? Isn't that nice? That's a nice finish. So it says turn that all the way out. And again, and that does loosen clipping to that dot that does um give that a nice amount of give so you're not struggling with that piece so that's the collar and now what we need to do is it says turning the collar out and then we want to press so go ahead after you've turned everything out and press it into place okay so I've pressed that that uh, the facing pieces to the wrong side of the fabric. Now, for me, this is what I just like to do. Um, I use heat bond to secure the facing in place so it doesn't move. So I'm just going to put a strip here and a strip here just so it doesn't move. That's just me personally, what I always do to facings so they don't shift. And when you wash them and they get all, you have to worry about really, you know, getting the wrinkles out. So that is what I'm going to do here. And then we're going to go ahead and work on the pleats in the tucks in the front. Okay. So I apologize. I know my fabric is dark so you will not see these lines uh, I should have annotated on the screen when you were marking the pleat lines from the pattern to mark the front of your fabric mark the right side of your fabric so what I went and did is retraced and you can't see it but there's the pleat line here here and here so these four areas I did go back in and pleat uh, or remark I should say and so what you're doing is, because remember you have this opening and it's a raw edge. Right there is a raw edge. So what you're doing, grab a couple pins. So I have my pins. And so it tells you, you know, for the right side only, for the left side only. And so because after you do this, the instructions 
suggest that you try it on for fit. I am just going to go for it. And what you're doing is, hopefully you can see this. For me, this is the way I'm doing it. You might want your tuck on the different side. So keep that in mind because you do have the whole box to work with. So, and you have the middle line. So you have one, two, three, four. So take the line over here and you are going to meet it to that line here. So you're not quite covering up all of that raw edge, but you are covering up some of it. So what I am going to do is pin it in place just so it, I, I make sure that it stays down. So this can be, might be a little tricky, but you'll see in just a moment. So I'm pinning all the way down right there so you see how I have pinned that first pleat in place and then the left side which had the the pattern piece was more on the angle you go ahead and take all of that and meet all the way over and so what's happening is let's do that again because I went too far Okay, now that you have this side pleated, remember you have the two other lines that's over here. So if you marked it, you'll see all of the lines. It's four in total. But this here is the side, the other raw edge. Remember, we're going to close out all of this raw edge. So I'm taking that middle line. And again, this is how I am choosing to do mine. You might want to shift and fold it in the other direction. So I am taking from that line and pinning it, taking it all the way over. And you see it will slightly overlap that other fold. And what you're going to get, you see this nice V. Now, that neckline is a nice V up at the top. So now you have a nice V. And again, I apologize with my print. It's a little hard to see. But then I'm just going to repin this in place. And it says to stitch down the front. So all of that, everything is caught in there. And you won't see any of this. So you're going to stitch across the top here. Again, I apologize. I'll show you once I'm done. But and then stitch all the way down. And that'll be your tuck over. So hopefully that makes sense. I didn't confuse you there. But real simple. Again, play with how you want yours to go. And then make sure everything is uh, laying in the right way. How you want it to. You can try it on for fit as the pattern suggests. But this is what I am going to go ahead and pin this in place. And then I'm going to go ahead and stitch this down. And I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here it is stitched down. And as you can tell, that's the V part of the neck with the facing piece on the inside. And so you go down to pretty much where there's really no more overlap. And that's where you stop. Again, you can't really tell in my fabric. But that is that. That is the front. The front is complete. Now we will move on to the back. We are close to getting done. So... Now you have your back piece and you want to make your gathering stitches or in the instructions it um, says to use a string. Um, and so I'm not sure at what point it told you to put the string down, but uh, I believe you put the string down and then you zigzag. Yeah, put the string down first, then zigzag over the string <laughs> and then pull and that's supposed to gather. I'm just going to do old school. I have two rows of gathering stitches and I'm going to gather it to the length of the back yoke piece because then you're going to attach them right sides together. So that is what I'm going to do and I'm going to attach it to the back yoke piece and then what you're going to do is once it's attached 
then you're turning under the seam and stitching i believe it, it will tell us to stitch in the ditch press under the seam allowance on the yoke back lining and attach it says attach back seam by hand but it also can be done by machine which you all know that is exactly how i'm going to do it um and it says to base the armhole edges of yokes together um to make it all one piece so i am going to go ahead and do we are at step 20 21 and 22 so i am going to go ahead and gather the back attach it to the back yoke and then baste the um yoke piece to the armhole as it suggests and then we're off to the side seams all righty so the back yoke is in is gathered in this dress is going to be so pretty but you might you were you're not gonna really be able to see this because of the type of fabric that i'm using but the instructions call for you and i'll talk about my overall review at the end but it calls for you you see how there's a clean finish on the inside so it calls for you to turn the inside lining piece under and stitch to cover up that stitch line um that you would have created from adding the back yoke pieces together so that's what i did what i did was i folded it under the seam allowance and then i stuck pins on the outside so I knew because I wanted the line, even though you can't see it because of the print, but I wanted to make sure my line wasn't wobbly or, you know, off center or too far away from the seam. So I just carefully turned under each side, flipped it over, pinned all the way around. Um, definitely would have preferred the burrito method on that because it leaves that inside edge raw just that one little piece and i think that um it's enough there what well, we're actually is not long enough because what i was going to say is let me come closer so as you can tell there's a raw edge in there so it naturally wants to fold in and then I was going to say, you can just stitch in the ditch on the outside. But what I am going to do, since it naturally, it doesn't reach far enough to do that. Um, I would have to pull it quite a bit of ways to get to that. I'm going to see if it causes any bunching anywhere. Oh, it doesn't look like it do. Okay go ahead um this wasn't supposed to be a so long <laughs> because i haven't sewn this pattern before and i usually like to have sewn a pattern before um, i've done a so long but it naturally wants to fold in you can since this is knit it does stretch perfectly over that seam and i'm just going to stitch right on over that it does stretch far enough so that is what I am going to do. So then the inside is, you know, it looks clean and you don't have to worry about that raw edge. So that is what I'm going to do. That's not in the instructions. No, it is not. It is not in the instructions. So I am going to do that real quick. And then we are going to go ahead and get with the side seams. We are almost done. Okay, side seams are all stitched. And I surged, of course, mine. It does say in the instructions you can clip into here to make it easier once you add the cuff on here. Um, I'm going to wait and see if I need to do that. Um, I don't think I will because of the stretch of the fabric, but we shall see. Um, and so I'm not going to go over the last step. So that is finishing the armhole for the dress. And that is steps 27, 28, and 29. Um, and then it talks about doing the hem. Um, if you did that, cut out the hem facing pieces, remember I did not. So the only thing I am going to do is surge all, this is a huge hem. <laughs> I'm gonna surge all the way around and I'm gonna turn it up probably a good inch and then stitch it down, zigzag stitch all the way around and that's it for my hem. That's it for the cuff. She is done.
you will see a full review, pictures, twirls, all that good stuff um, coming up next. Thanks so much for joining me on this today. Okay, I hope I did not confuse you in any parts of that, but let's just start in with the fabric. So this beautiful fabric, as you all know, I am a brand ambassador for Minerva Fabrics and they have their own exclusive line of designs that they have that they have put on different substrates of fabrics. And so this is actually a viscose jersey. The pattern calls for, you can do, um, actually you can use woven and or knit. So you can use a heavy crepe. It says a heavyweight rayon crepe, three or four ply silk drapey knits. And so um, I decided to use a knit. This is a viscose jersey. Um, and so this is a little different from other viscose jerseys. And you see the little tuck there. Um, and I will get into, I didn't bring my, um, remember during the um, construction, you can do a fit and see how you like where things are fitting. For me, I was fine with the V because I was fine with wearing, I'm wearing a um, Rebecca Page cam me up underneath but um this is a viscose jersey which is absolutely beautiful what i can share with you let me just grab a piece of the fabric i only have just a a bit of it left here just scraps really um the back side of it is that uh white in the front is the you know the digital print and so it's a little different from so we use viscose jersey, viscose, um, and rayon kind of interchangeably, but they're processed differently. And one of the things, if you do have, it's still nice and drapey, and you'll be able to tell in the pictures and everything too. But um, I, it's, I guess with the rayon, I want to say I feel like it's a little bit more shiny. So, so to speak, if I'm describing that right, but this particular substrate, I feel like it's a viscose on a cotton backing, if that makes sense. Um, but anyway, absolutely love this. Sold up beautifully. Um, obviously used a knit needle, needle uh, made for knits. So the sizing, let's go into the sizing. I went with a size E based on the finished garment measurements, which was a 44 and one fourth bust a 50 finished waist and a hip of 57. Now I knew that the, um, that this had ease in it is meant to be, um, have movement. If you read through the instructions, you notice that she mentions she likes a, a more fit around her bust and then for it to be flowy um, throughout. And so that's what um, I did because I like that fit as well. And so, and I love how flowy um, it is. Very, very nice. Very nice and flowy. I would say time to sew this pattern up. Um, you can get it done in a day, most certainly. I took me a couple days, obviously, because I was recording things and then once I realized it was turning into a so long then I just started doing showing things a little bit more in detail and so yeah that's <laughs> that's um, how long it took me now one of the things I do want to point out is make sure that you're pay, paying attention to the sizing um, because the sizing very size inclusive pattern um, again this goes up to if you're familiar with Sandra Bedzina um, that designs for a Vogue uh, her patterns are very size inclusive so she goes up to it starts at a letter A up to a letter J and the J goes up to a bust of 55, a waist of 50 and a half, and a hip of 57. And that's without the finished garment measurement. So definitely there's um, that range you can still play around with once you get into that finished garment measurement um, on there. But definitely lovely, lovely size inclusive pattern. Um, and also I think I mentioned a lot about in the... Uh, in the beginning about this being called a cuff. Well, it is a grown on sleeve and they call it a flange. And so cuff, flange, whatever, same thing to me. But anyway, so that's what that is. Beautiful finish, love how that turned out. Um, so with the, uh, also with the sizing, what I wanted to say about the nesting of the pattern. So you will notice um, like maybe A, B, 
D, F is like, and that's just an example, is one pattern piece and then the E, F, the E, the J, and the H might be another pattern piece. So just making sh make sure you pay attention to the pattern pieces, how they're nested in their sizing so you make sure you um, copy the right, or if you're tracing, cutting out, whatever you're doing, that you're cutting out the right um, sizing. Also for the, I mentioned, I should have annotated on the screen, when you're tracing out the pleating lines on the front of the bodice, um, do trace those lines on the front of your fabric, on the right side of your fabric. Because during the construction, it actually, and I showed it, when you are doing the pleat and the cross over here in the front, you're doing that from the right side of the fabric, not the wrong side. So it doesn't make sense to uh, trace um, those marking lines on the wrong side of your fabric because you can't see it. Um, so, but do it on the front side um, of your fabric. De obviously use a marking tool that you know will disappear or you can brush away um, later on. And um, also for these, these are some pretty large pieces. So make sure that you are ironing all of your pattern pieces to make sure you're getting out any crinkles, wrinkles, and anything in it so you can be able to set out your pattern pieces beautifully. Um, and then um, the interfacing. So this is knit. I use knit for mine. So I did use knit interfacing. So you want to make sure that you are using knit interfacing and it works worked out beautifully absolutely love it this dress is absolutely gorgeous I love it I love it. I highly recommend it that's what I'm gonna say I highly recommend it like I mentioned I did not do the hem facing pieces just because I've done that in other patterns and it just seemed to make it more wobbly I know it's to add body and some um, stability down there but Mm, I didn't feel like for this I would need that. So choose uh, if you decide you want to do the hem facing pieces. Um, and then um, one of the things that she also suggests throughout the pattern, and if you're familiar with Sandra Bedzina patterns, is that you do a fitting along the way. And so I did not. I was comfortable with what the finished garment measurements are and I decided just to go for it and it worked out in my favor so I must say I absolutely love it and one of the other things you will notice remember the pockets and see remember you don't usually when you put it in pockets you're cutting out four pieces and you'll see in the photos you only cutting out that one piece and it's sewn right into the front part of the dress love that absolutely love that that turned out so beautiful and this is just a beautiful dress now it was hot the day that i am filming this so i was planning to take pictures somewhere else but no we just took them right out here and um so i can get back into the <laughs> the air conditioning but um beautiful beautiful dress i absolutely love it i thank you guys for picking this this is a new release it just came out um in april is when i picked it up it just this is a 2023 release vogue release so it is fresh it is available and so you can go ahead and grab it and if you want to sew along um, with me have some little help along the way little tips and tricks definitely follow the sew along and um, pick up just a few uh, tips along the way like I said excuse me I didn't show every single single step but I show what I thought might be some of the tricky bits like the collar the um, the tuck in the front and then the uh, pockets, inserting those. Um, and so, yeah, that is it. I don't have anything else to say. I should have been popping a video and picture here, um, but I absolutely love this. I love it. And um, so far as skill level, with, um, I think it's beginner friendly. I think it's beginner friendly. The only, th the, and really this collar is not tricky at all. It might, it's a, it's like a big paragraph <laughs> in the, uh, in the instructions, but it's not bad at all. I think it is beginner friendly, um, maybe advanced beginner, um, maybe and then um and of course you have the yoke pieces and the way they have you put the yoke in usually most people would like to do the burrito method for stuff like that but 
um, it still worked out just fine. And you would have seen how I finished that off on the inside. Although I will say when you do the tuck, I was curious on how that looked on the inside. Actually, here is the inside of the dress. And this is where it folds over. So <clears throat> it can be, I think I probably could have tacked it down just a little bit better, but it's not causing any bulk in any way, as you can tell. And then just wanted to show you the inside. I was able to turn that under and tack it down. I used the heat bond to keep this, the facing piece in place. And so I do like the way that looks. And then here's the back where the yoke piece is on the inside. So definitely beautiful, clean finish on the inside. And it's fine. It's not, it's not bulky or anything in that area. I'll try to pop up a clip of what it looks like on the inside, but if I remember, but, um, not bulky at all nothing feels heavy on but i will say this is absolutely beautiful beautiful evening um and when it's cooler this will definitely transition into fall throughout winter for sure is i do like it for summer as well i do like it for the summer but in the the we are over 100 degrees i would not wear this during the day um, but in the evenings um summer evenings and into fall and yeah this is an all year for me this is an all year round dress for sure for sure for sure so all right everybody thank you so much again for choosing this one go out to the community tab choose the simplicity um pattern and yeah i am very happy with how this turned out um there is a top on, on here as well a tunic um pattern on here as well and so um which the construction is uh totally different for that uh for because you got sleeves and all of that but yeah let me know what you think let me know if you picked it up and definitely if you decide to get it in the future and reference this video for any of the tips definitely leave a comment down below and let me know that you that it was helpful for you and what you thought of your finished garment all right everybody thank you so much for tuning in today i greatly appreciate it and we will see you on sunday bye